Well, good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our service, a special service, Nativity service this morning. And um, this is the second Sunday of Advent. It's the 6th of December, 2020. And it's very good to have our Nativity play. It's going to take place a little bit later on in the service. Um, And it's good to have the band with us. And uh, Helen's going to be singing as well. So we look forward to all of that. And um, um, can you see, I don't know whether the folk at home can see anything of the Christmas tree behind me. Can you tweak the camera, Richard? There's the Christmas tree. And we all want to say a very big thank you to the team who put that up for us and decorated it this week. And um, we're going to, because it's the second Sunday of Advent, we're going to have our second Advent candle lit now. And um, Anna's going to come and do that for us. And the Advent prayer is going to come up. Thank you very much, Anna. The Advent prayer is going to come up. People of God, be glad. God delights in you giving you joy for sadness and turning the darkness to light. Be strong in hope, therefore, for your God comes to save. You are God's children. And we all say together, Lord, make us one in the love of Christ today and forever. Amen. And so we come to our first hymn. This morning is O Little Town of Bethlehem, and we're going to stand to sing. to our confession, and we're going to say these words together. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. 
In your presence, we recognize our own wrongdoing and failure. We confess that we have sinned against you through uncaring actions, unkind words, and selfish attitudes. We are truly sorry and ask you to forgive us. Open our, open our hearts to you and fill them with your glorious light that others may see you shining through our lives. Amen. And may the love of God bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So do please be seated as we come now to our Nativity play. Christmas for. At Christmas time, we remember the birth of Jesus when Mary and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem and had to stay in a stable because there was no room anywhere for them to stay. Angels told the shepherds of his birth. Wise men brought gifts to the king, and I am sure the people of Bethlehem very soon heard the news of the birth of a very special baby. But what about now? Who is Christmas for? Christmas is for the children. We love the tree, the lights, and the crib, the presents we receive, both small and big. We love Jesus, the baby so small, for he was born to save us all. His is the birthday we celebrate, so I'll hurry to the manger, I mustn't be late. Yes, the children believe the Christmas joy, which touches the heart of each girl and boy. Who else is Christmas for? Not for us, there's just too much to do. Plus the cost is such a worry, the bills are due. We try our hardest to provide the best. For children, relations and our guests. No, Christmas is not a time of rest. We both end up feeling so very stressed. But yes, it is for you. You can find the wonder too. Go to the manger and the stable bear and take all your worries and leave them there. For his is the birthday we celebrate. We'll, we'll hurry, hurry to, to the, the manger. manger. We, we mustn't, mustn't be late. late. Lying in the stable, the infant sleep. Who else is the baby to meet? Who else is Christmas for? Not for me, not for me. I go on my own way, you see. Don't listen now to what people say. I don't even know if it's true anyway. Grown-ups don't show it, it's in what they do. They've got no time for me, that's true. Yet I wonder and try to think things out, wonder what living is all about. Go to the manger, kneel in prayer, you too will find your answer there. Take your questions to the infant sweet, lay them down at the baby's feet. For his is the birthday we celebrate. I'll hurry to the manger, I mustn't be late. To the Christ child, the king who else shall bring. Who else is Christmas for? Not for me, not for me. I used to enjoy the Christmas fun. Now those days are over and done. The good times, they've long since gone, since my daughter grew up, and so did my son. Now I'm alone, only the past to share. Who cares for me? For whom can I care? This Christmas is for you. The love of God stays all life through. Take your memories to the stable bear. Take them to the manger and leave them there. For his is the birthday we celebrate. I'll hurry to the manger. I mustn't be late. Now let us think of a distant land where famine and war go hand in hand. Who else is Christmas for? Not for me. Not for me. I don't belong here. I'm a refugee. Forced from my home through war and fear running and hiding until I came here. Now I have nothing, except what you see. No money, no home, no food or family. Is there anyone who cares what happens to me? Don't feel alone, there is someone to care. God knows how you feel, he too has been there. Forced to live in a foreign land when his parents fled from Herald's hand. 
No matter your fate, he cares for all. His love is a constant, unconditional. For his is the birthday we celebrate. I'll hurry to the manger. I mustn't be late. A lonely person from a distant land, to who else does the baby hold out his hand? Who else is Christmas for? Not for me, not for me. I've nowhere to sleep, nowhere to go. I see a room lit with a Christmas glow, but no one cares or wants to know. No family with me is happy to share. Mine's a park bench or a basement stair. No room for me anywhere. There is room for you, near one who knows. What it feels like to be left out in the cold. No welcome for him on earth. Just a stable to greet his birth. The only place to lay his head. A manger where the animals fed. So go to the manger. You will find welcome there. I'll go to the manger. I mustn't be late. For this is the birthday we'll celebrate. Look at the grip. See the people there. Ordinary people like you and me can find the gift that is given for free. Jesus' love is all to share. It fills our, um, our lives with hope, not despair. So do not wait. Come, meet him today. He will welcome you and not turn away. Take my hand. We mustn't be late, for his is the birthday we celebrate. Well, I think we'd want to say a really big thank you. And shall we give them a round of applause? <laughs> thank you for that message that uh, what God offers us at Christmas is offered to everyone. And uh, thank you for planning that so carefully and even keeping two meters apart at all times. Well done, team. Thank you. Well, we're going to, um, we're going to have a, a, another um, a carol now, Light of the World, and the band is uh, setting up as I speak, and uh, the band are going to play it, and Helen's going to sing solo.
Thank you very much, band, and thank you, Helen. Um, and thank you to Mary as well, who was playing in the band and uh, who was also responsible for the organ music uh, as we arrived today. Now we come to a prayer, a prayer uh, addressed to Jesus, who comes to us as our King, our Priest, and our Saviour. Lord Jesus, our King, Thank you for coming into our world. Help us to let you rule in our lives. Lord Jesus, our priest, thank you for coming so that we can know God. Help us to draw near to you. Lord Jesus, our saviour, thank you for dying on the cross so that our sins can be forgiven. Help us to accept and share your forgiveness now. Lord God, thank you for the good news of your coming at Christmas. May your joy and comfort fill our lives today and always. Amen. And now uh, Kirsty is going to come and uh, read from the Bible for us. The reading is from Matthew, verse 1 to verse 13 in the International Children's Bible. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten girls who went to wait for the bridegroom. They took their lamps with them. Five of the girls were foolish and five were wise. The foolish girls took their lamps but did not take more oil for the lamps to burn. The wise girls took their lamps and more oil in jars. The bridegroom was very late. All the girls became sleepy and went to sleep. At midnight, someone cried out, the bridegroom is coming, come and meet him. Then all the girls woke up and got their lamps ready. But the foolish girl said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. The wise girls answered, no, the oil we have might not be enough for all of us. Go to the people who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. So the five foolish girls went to buy oil and while they were gone, the bridegroom came. The girls who were ready went in with the bridegroom to the wedding feast. Then the door was closed and locked. Later, the others came back. They called, Sir, Sir, open the door to let us in. But the bridegroom answered, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. So always be ready. You don't know the day or the time the Son of Man will come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Kirsty. Let's have a, a word of prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. And as we consider it together now, we pray that um, by your spirit, you'd help us to understand it and to commit to obeying it for the glory of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you have a, a Bible there, you might like to have it open to that gospel reading from Matthew 25. So if you've got a, a pew Bible, it's page 994. Now, in church for the last three weeks, we've become quite familiar, haven't we, with Matthew chapter 24. And we have that chapter that's full of Jesus' teaching about the signs that point to his coming again at the end of the age. And now in the very next sentence, as we just step over into chapter 25, we suddenly find Jesus telling a story about some girls going to a wedding. Now, why is that? 
Well, the answer is because Matthew chapter 24 is not just theory. Jesus isn't teaching about his return merely for his disciples' information. No, his purpose is that they and we can be ready. And this story, this, this, this parable of, of the girls going to a wedding is a story about being ready. So let's see. Ten girls all wanted to be at the wedding feast, and if you'd asked any of them, you'd have got the same answer. Oh yes, I'm definitely planning to be there. But only five of the ten actually made it. The others didn't. So why was that? Because the five who made it had brought enough oil for their lamps along with a spare supply. And the other five had just come along with the oil that was already in their lamps and no more. The first five had come prepared for a long wait. The other five hadn't thought about that. They'd just shown up as they were. We see that the first five and the other five have different attitudes. The first five were determined to be there. That they thought it through and they'd prepared just in case there might be a long delay. They had bought extra oil and they had brought it. They were committed to getting to that feast with the bridegroom. The other lot, by contrast, were casual in their attitude. And you know how this works as well as I do. You're going on a journey to meet someone. How you set about making that journey shows how important meeting that person is to you. If it's really important to you, then you make every effort to be on time. You plan to catch the train before the train that you need to catch. Or if you're driving, you set out an hour earlier just in case of traffic. Or if it's particularly important, then you, you travel the night before, don't you? And, you? and you stay overnight. That is what reveals how much you really care about meeting that person. So then, committed or casual? Your actions give it away. And that's what Jesus' story is all about, really. It's about motivation. It's, it's about what really matters to you. The issue isn't not knowing when the bridegroom is coming. The issue is about attitude. It's about being ready all the time. If we think that knowing the time of the bridegroom's arrival would solve the problem, then we're missing the point. If we're missing the point, if we think, well, if the girls had known what time the bridegroom was going to arrive, then they could all have just turned up with their lamps lit five minutes beforehand and all would have been well. If we think that, then we're missing the point. And we know that that's the case because of the rather surprising response from the bridegroom in verse 12. Let me read you verses 11 and 12. Later on, the others came back. They called, Sir, sir, open the door to let us in. But the bridegroom answered, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Why wouldn't the bridegroom let them in? It wasn't because the place was too full. It wasn't a punishment for being late and having had to rush off to buy oil. No. It was about lack of relationship. I don't know you. Imagine this. Suppose God were to make it known that Jesus was going to return on the 1st of January. Everyone would be really well behaved on the 31st of December, wouldn't they? And probably the churches would be packed on Sunday the 27th of December and the collection plates would be overflowing. But all of that would be a complete waste of time because, as we've seen, what matters is relationship. Relationship with the bridegroom. 
And remember that in the Bible, the bridegroom is always Jesus. So what this is all about is a call to love him, to want to live in his way, and to want to start that now. Because if we're serious about him, then our attitude to life is not going to be to live self-indulgently now with a view to making a last-minute change of heart, so as, by that means, to secure a place in heaven, a place at the wedding supper. No. If we're serious about him, then we'll want to be living in his way right now without delay. And this is possible from today with the help of the Holy Spirit and the help of the church if we truly want it. And the choice I make about that will reveal the spiritual truth of what is really in my heart. And that is why we need to be ready. We need to be people who genuinely want to start the new life now and not just pay lip service to wanting it later. It's an invitation to practice now what we'll be doing in heaven. Because isn't that where we long to be? A life with Jesus now and forever. What could we want more than that? So let's keep our lamps full of oil and not waste a single day. Amen. And now we're going to, we're coming to our next hymn. I know it's very difficult not to sing, isn't it? I know how hard it is. You kind of have to keep a grip on yourself. But I don't see a reason why we can't hum. So we can hum along. And the band are going to play Our God Reigns, and Helen is going to sing it for us. Emmanuel
watchmen lift their voices and raise a shout of joy for he Christ our Saviour with our prayers, saying, Jesus, light of the world, shine in the darkness, we pray. We pray for all who are friendless, lonely, and in despair. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for all the people we know who are lonely and isolated and worried about the risk of COVID. We pray for all the elderly people in our care homes who miss the touch of human people and their families. We remember especially the residents of local care homes and their families who have to isolate at this time. We ask for your peace to surround all of them in difficult times. Help them to find in you the faithful friend who will always stay beside them. Jesus, light of the world, shine in the darkness, we pray. We pray for all who are ill in mind or body. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will enable all nurses, doctors and carers to show love and patience to the people in their care. We thank you for the commitment so many show, even in difficult times. Surround all who suffer physically and mentally. Help them to feel your healing touch on their lives. Jesus, light of the world, shine in the darkness, we pray. We pray for those who rule our country and our world. Help them to show your compassion to all who are helpless and vulnerable. Jesus, light of the world, Shine in the darkness, we pray, and reveal your glory throughout the world. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and our prayer today. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you very much, Sue. And uh, we come now to our family news. I hope everyone's got a copy of the newsletter. It's a two-week edition, um, and you can see on it the services that we, we have uh, next week. Um, a communion service next Sunday morning. And then um, in the afternoon, um, our tea time Chris Dingle service is going to be held twice, at uh, 2.30 and again at 4.30. And uh, we're asking those who'd like to come to book in uh, using Eventbrite. And the reason for that is just to help us control safely the numbers in church at, at any one service. Um, and the same thing will apply to the uh, crib service on, on Christmas Eve. Um, 
I, I think, am I right in thinking, Tom, it's after next Sunday the booking will be open for the crib service, um, again on uh, Eventbrite. Um, there is, there's a terrible mistake on the newsletter. On the 20th of December, it doesn't tell us about the carol service. So it's gone missed out somehow. So half past six on the 20th is our carol service. And uh, we're very much looking forward to that because the choir, John's got a choir organised to, to sing at, at that. Now, um, Trowbridge Christmas Nativity Trail. Has anybody heard of this yet? Great. Oh, plenty of hands going up. That's good. Um, it's from Sunday the 20th till the 27th of December. And uh, all, all around Trowbridge in different places, mostly in churches, but also Tesco, um, and one or two schools, um, there's a tableau uh, representing part of the Christmas story. And uh, you, can, you can get one of these um, leaflets, which enables you to go around, and, and you, you, if you go around in order, you fill in the gaps, and, and you complete the Christmas story. And, and there's some rumours about prizes of chocolate for those who, uh, who, who complete the whole thing. And one of the, um, one of the tableaus, in fact, it's the last one, isn't it, Angela? The last one in the journey is going to be just there outside the in, in the south porch uh, of St. James's Church and uh, Angela's very kindly setting that up um, so there are leaflets available um, we can grab one on, on the way out um, either to use yourself or to pass on to someone else the Trowbridge Christmas Nativity Trail and um, just um, a reminder that we, we plan to hold all, all, all the normal services that we would normally do over Christmas, we're going to do, except we're not doing the midnight communion service um, for a couple of reasons, but the main one is I don't think it's practicable to get the church sanitized between half past one in the morning and um, uh, you know, when, when, whenever the morning service starts on Christmas Day. So we won't be doing that, but we'll be doing everything else. So do come and join us. Uh, over Christmas, and uh, I, I, yeah, we, we we said thank you to the Christmas tree folk at the beginning, didn't we? That's right, Richard. You moved the camera, didn't you? That's right. And is there anything else I'm meant to be? <laughs> no, church wardens. No, everyone's sitting quietly. That's great. Okay, so that enables us to come to the big business of the day, which is to remind everyone that it's December. And who's got a birthday? Who wants to own up to having a birthday in December? I'm not going to ask you to come out the front. I'm going to ask you, just put your hand up where you are, and we're going to clock. Have you, is, have you got a birthday in December? How old are you going to be? You're going to be five. Great. And there's some people over there who are going to be a bit older than five, I think. But we're just looking around. to so Put your hand up again so we can all just clock whose birthdays. Now then, all of us... Oh, and Peter over there. Peter's birthday as well. Yeah, is it okay if I say how old are you going to be, Peter? 21. What, what date? 23rd of December. Should we give him a clap? <laughs> now, what we're going to do now, all, all of us who didn't have our hands up are going to pray for the folk who did have their hands up. And the words that uh, we're going to say in our prayer are going to appear on the screens here. So let's say this prayer together for all those folk. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the happiness of birthdays and for bringing these your children safely through another year. Throughout the year to come, may they continue to grow in the knowledge of your faithfulness and of your love for them in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And when's your birthday going to be? Your fifth birthday? On the 20th? 14th. 14th. On the 40th. So how long you've got to wait? You've only got to wait another eight days. For your birthday. Shall we give you a birthday clap? Let's give her a birthday clap. <laughs> okay, now we're going to come to our, our final hymn. Uh, See him lying on a bed of straw. And... Um, Let's, let's stand um, while we don't sing. <laughs>
let me, as, as, as we stand, let me pray a closing prayer for us all. And after that, the band are going to play uh, as, as we depart. So thank you very much to the band. Son of God, Son of Mary, we have joined the worship of the angels. May we never lose that heavenly vision. Like the shepherds, we have rejoiced at the news of your birth. Help us to proclaim that message in word and deed to your praise and glory. Amen.